All right. Good morning, church. It's good to see everybody today on this beautiful, brisk Sunday morning. We're so glad that you have uh, decided to join us for worship. And if you're joining online, uh, we welcome you as well. I hope you've had a great week in the Lord. And it's a great day to come together to sing His praises. Amen? All right, we're going to start by singing this great hymn, Revive Us Again. Let's all stand up. Let's lift our voices to the Lord. We praise Thee, O God, for the Son of Thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, Thine the glory. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Thine the glory. Revive us again. We praise Thee, O God, for Thy Spirit of light, who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, Thine the glory. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Thine the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who has borne all our sins and has cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Revive us again, fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. All right, can you put your hands together like this? All right, let's give a little bit more uh, track on the sound in the house, please. Two. Let's give more track in the house, please. Four. Weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs. Sing with me. Drink of the water. Come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy. Come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son to save us whoever believes in him will live forever this is where you clap here we go i don't think you guys are hearing the track in the house we need that please That's better. Bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting there with open arms. He is open arms. Sing with me. For God so loved the world that he gave us is one and only. Son to save us, whoever believes in him will live forever. The power of hell forever defeated, now it is well. I'm walking in freedom for God so loved, God so loved the world. Praise God. Praise God. 
praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, praise Him for the wonders of His love. Praise God, praise God from whom all blessings flow. That's it. Praise Him, praise Him for the wonders of His love. All right, let me hear you, church, for God so loved. For God so loved the world that He gave us, His one and only Son to save. For God so loved the world that He gave us, His one and only Son to save us, whoever believes in Him will live forever. The power of hell forever defeated, now it is well. I'm walking in freedom for God so loved, God so loved the world. Last part. Bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting, God so loved the world. You did a great job. Let's give the Lord praise. Amen. Thank you. Would you be seated, please? Now, if I can just remember to keep my hand off the transmitter down here, this will continue to work. Good to see everybody this morning. Everybody well? Everybody doing well? All right. Let me uh, share a couple of things with you very quickly. Uh, Adam is not here today. He is homesick, and uh, we want to pray for him certainly as well. Uh, but uh, let me tell you about yesterday. Yesterday we had our Operation Christmas Child Packing Party. We had, uh, we did just over, barely over, I believe, 400 boxes, which is three times what we did last year. Amen. And, and let me say, that is because of your tremendous generosity. Uh, I forgot how many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pencils we had and paper and notebooks and stuffed animals and flip-flops and 400 pair of socks. And, I mean, the list of things went on and on and on. And, you know, it's just kind of like the Lord. Uh, when we finished all the boxes, we ran out of stuff. I mean, it, it just almost worked exactly. The way, certainly the way God designed it. Amen. We had 28 folks who came and worked. We started about 9.15. We had it arranged from 9 to 2 o'clock. I'm glad some folks didn't show up. If you showed up at 2 o'clock, we're sorry you missed us because we were finished by about 11.15. So I, I want you to know, I was, we'll have a slideshow next week. I was showing some photographs, taking some photographs. People were moving so fast, I'd just get them in frame, and they'd be gone. Uh, Roger, wherever you are, you know about that. You know, you take photographs, you want to get a good picture of someone, and you think, I got them, you go to snap it, they're gone. So there's lots of photos I took yesterday we won't be able to use next week, all right? So let me uh, share with you a couple of things, then we want to recognize our veterans. So veterans, if you've served active or inactive duty in, in our military, get yourself ready. I'm going to want you to come to the platform if you can, and if you can't make it up on the platform, to certainly stand here across the front in just a moment. Now before we do that, those of you that are our guests, we're glad that you're here. Would you reach into the pew right in front of you and take out a, a Connect card? We want to ask our guests to fill this out and place it in the offering plate on your way out of the service. You'll find offering plates in the foyer and in the hallway right out here. And then Sunrise folks and, and the guests as well, the backs of the plate, these are all blank. So there's an opportunity for you to record a prayer request there. We as a staff pray for you. 
uh, in our staff meeting, and we pray for these requests. And we certainly put them on our prayer request that goes out to the entire congregation. So if you have a prayer request, please record it on there as well and place it in the offering plate in just a little bit. Let me take just a moment so that we handle this now and not later on. Let me introduce to you our special guest speaker today, Melvin Everson. Melvin, would you stand and just turn around and wave at everybody here? All right. Let me... uh, I got a great big bio sheet here on him. It tells more than you'd want to know about Melvin. Uh, He retired 23 years in the Army. and That's why he's here today, and he's speaking with us today on connecting with God through sacrifice. Sacrifice. What a great thing. And here, there's a lot of things I could tell you about Melvin. He's a former state representative for the state of Georgia in the legislature. Uh, he has been a city councilman for Snellville. Uh, there's just lots of things he has done. And I could read all that and it's all be true, but here's what I want to say to you about this man. As a pastor, I do not give up this pulpit to just anybody. In fact, I won't do it. But I, am, I feel wonderful about having him here today because here's what I think is most important to know about Melvin. He is a man that loves God. Amen. He loves our Lord. He serves our Lord. He ministers to people all across the state of Georgia. In fact, when I read where he is on Facebook, it just makes me tired reading about where all you, wherever you are all week long in this committee and that committee and serving on this board and that board. Uh, I'm excited about you hearing him and hearing his heart. So you listen prayerfully in just a little while when he comes to share a word from, God's, a word from God for us today. Veterans, would you come and join me here in the front? I have a gift for you, and I would like to give that to you, and we would like as a congregation to pray for you. So, veterans, would you come and join us here? If you can make it to the platform, that's great. If not, feel free to stand across the front, but face the congregation, if you will. That's proper. That's right. That's right. You know, last time we had some ladies. Where are our ladies? Our ladies aren't here today who have served. But we're so thankful for these men. Amen? I have a pen here for them. This is proud to be a veteran. It has an American flag on it. It has a soldier saluting on it. And so we as a congregation want to give each one of these men one of these pens. Join me in praying for these men and for their families. Father, we bless your holy name for your presence, for your provision, and for your protection. Lord, I'm thankful for these men and for their service. 
Thank you for their commitment and for their sacrifice. We ask you, Father, that you would bless them today as we remember their service, as we as a congregation say thank you with all of our hearts for them. Lord, we love them. We ask you to bless them in the days ahead. Would you bless our nation? For Father, we need men, more men and women just like these. For it's in the precious name of Jesus, our Savior, we pray. Amen. God bless you, men. You may return to your seat. We have a video we want you to see as a congregation. If you'll hold up on the video until the men get back in their place, because I don't want them to miss seeing this. certainly thank our veterans and uh, as I was watching that I was just thinking you know whether you have served in the uh, armed forces here uh, on this earth all of us are veterans if you're a Christian you're a veteran of the spiritual uh, warfare that goes on each and every day but uh, we're going to sing this song whom shall I fear the God of angel armies who defends us in our spiritual struggles amen Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Let's all stand and celebrate him this morning. You hear me when I call. You are my morning song. Though darkness fills the night. It cannot hide the light. Whom shall I fear? You crush the enemy underneath my feet. You are my sword and shield. Though troubles linger still, whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me, I know who stands behind, the God of angel armies is always by my side, 
the one who reigns forever he is a friend of mine the god of angel armies is always by my side my strength is in your name for you alone can say you will deliver me yours is the victory whom shall i fear Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever. He is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side and nothing formed against us shall stand you hold the whole world in your hand amen i'm holding on to your promise you are faithful you are faithful sing that again church and nothing formed and nothing born against me shall stand. You hold the whole world in your hands. I'm holding on to your promises. You are faithful. You are faithful. You are faithful. I know who stands behind the God of angel armies is always by my side the one who reigns forever he is a friend of mine the God of angel armies is always by my side I know who goes before me I know who stands behind the God is always by my side the one who reigns forever he is a friend of mine the god of angel armies is always by my side the god of angel armies is always by my side amen I was lost, I was in chains, the world had a hold of me. My heart was a stone, I was covered in shame when he came for me. I couldn't run, couldn't run from his presence, I couldn't run couldn't run from his arms Jesus he loves me he loves me he is for me Jesus how can it be he loves me he is for me it was a fire deep in my soul I'll never be the same I stepped out of the dark and into the light when he called my name I couldn't run couldn't run from his presence I couldn't run couldn't run from his arms Jesus he loves 
loves me, He loves me, He is for me, Jesus, how can it be, He loves me, He is for me, He holds the stars and He holds my heart with healing hands that bear He holds the stars. One time, church. He holds the stars and he holds my heart with healing hands that bear the scars. The rugged cross where he died for me. My only hope, my everything. Jesus. for me Jesus how can it be he loves me he is for me he loves me he loves he loves me he loves he is for me he loves my God Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you for your goodness and your grace, Lord. And thank you, Jesus, for salvation, for completing the work of salvation on the cross. And thank you for your love. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, amen. You may be seated, church. I want to share a song with you before uh, Brother Melvin comes up. Um, and I want us to sing it together as a congregation next week as we go into the time of Thanksgiving and season of Thanksgiving. This song is called The Goodness of God. We have so much to be thankful for. Amen. fails me all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up till I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God 
All my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am in, I will see of the goodness of voice. If you know it, sing it with me. You have led me through the fire, darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of All my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made, I will see of the goodness. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down and surrendered now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am in, I will see of the goodness of All my life you have been faithful, oh, you've been faithful, all my life you have been so, so good, With every breath that I am in, I will see of the goodness. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Ah, it's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Give God a hand clap of praise this morning, I tell you. Ah. And the brother on the, the um, piano there, thank God, praise God for you. If I had a voice like that, there's no telling where I'd be. God bless you. To Pastor Don. Give this man a God a hand clap of praise. I'll tell you what. I, uh, I count it as a blessing to be here before you today. 
because of the graciousness of this young man right here. I think the world of this guy. When I first met him years ago, when I started as Gwinnett Technical College where I'm employed, it was just something about his aura <laughs> that I knew that this was a man of God. Y'all are blessed to have this man as your pastor. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. And I'm praying for you as your mother-in-law transitioned a couple of days ago and your wife, and I know how difficult that is. And God will see you through this. He brought you to it, and he's going to see you through it. And to the veterans here, thank you so much. Thank you. You've heard from your pastor thanking you. I want to personally thank you. As a veteran myself for 23 years, before I get into the message, I'd like to give you a little background about who this guy is that's standing in front of you. First of all, I want to acknowledge my wife who's not with me today because about two weeks ago, she had an unfortunate accident in our garage. She fell and broke her right fibula, broke one bone and cracked the other one. I told her she got jealous of the brave picture when he broke his, so she wanted to do the same thing. <laughs> So she's in the boot for two months, so she's mobile, not mobile, but she has the uh, in-house Cadillac where you put your knee on and drive around. But she sends her regards and blessings for not being able to be here today. And I bring you greetings from my home church, um, not on staff, but I'm a member of Cross Point, Dr. James Meredith, Sugarloaf. And I serve on the missions team in addition to the personnel advisory board for the church there. So I thank God for y'all allowing me to be here, and I thank Pastor Merritt for allowing me to be here as well. Thanks for such a warm and kind introduction, and thanks for honoring me with this opportunity to stand in your pulpit, Don, to share a few words to the people of God this Sunday morning. I want you all to give God a praise clap for such an anointed, spirit-filled, and dynamic pastor you have here at Sunrise Baptist Church. Once again, Reverend Dr. Don Whistle. Stand up and take a bow because you are worthy to be praised as much. I, I, I just can't say enough. And uh, 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 that's right, because I was shopping, and I don't know if he's here today, I probably see him, in Lidl, I guess that's how you pronounce it, supermarket on 78. Lidl, Lidl, yes. And there in there, I struck up a conversation with a young man, an African-American young man, and we got to talking, and I told him, you know, it was just something about his aura. Come to find out, he was a member of this church. And he was talking about this man right here. I said, I know him. How do you know him? I said, I know him. He had nothing but rave things to say about you. That speaks volumes for a man of God when you can meet his membership out in the congregation, out in the community, and they speak volume about you. It says something about what God has manifested in this young man to speak to the people of God here at Sunrise. I can't express that enough because we need more men like this in this world especially in the tumultuous time in which we're living. And now if you don't know, I'm going to get to the message here. We're in a spiritual battle. You can just turn on the TV. That's all you have to do. You can go to Twitter. You can go to Facebook. You can go to any social media and you can see we're in a spiritual battle for the soul of this nation. Once again, as I said, it's an honor to stand before you to share a few words about God, about him to this waiting congregation. I count myself not worthy to stand and speak, but God's mercy and grace and blood through Emmanuel's vein that cleansed me from my sin. I'm able to stand before you this morning. Thank you so much. As I said to the veterans, thank you. Well, I've served 23 years, active and reserved. I want to thank all of you for your service. This is my fourth veteran service, starting down in East Point where I spoke. 
Yesterday I spoke in Lawrenceville. Uh, Friday, Thursday I spoke in Snellville. If you're riding down in front of City Hall in Snellville, you will see a banner of my father, Northern Everson Sr., World War II veteran. That's my dad. My father fought in Iwo Jima. He actually saw the smoke clouds from the atomic bomb. He ended up being a chaplain for his unit. We had to do the final rites and interment for a lot of his friends. He never talked about that much to us, but when he passed on, he had a little metal box where he kept all of his personal things. And my mom was going through those things and had photos. And she said, this is why he never talked about it. Many of his friends, he had to say goodbye to. So every year, I honor him. I'm originally from a little place south Georgia. I'm getting to the message. Hold on. We're good, man. Yeah. I'm the seventh of ten kids. We grew up on our family farm down in Wilcox County, Rochelle. And I was born literally three hours after my mom left laboring in my dad's cotton field. My older siblings will tell you, he's right because we came home and we had an extra sibling. <laughs> mom came home for lunch and about three hours later, I discovered America, I was born. We had no running water, had the outhouse, the whole nine yards. Worked hard, my dad, fifth grade education. And when we were able to get indoor plumbing, my brothers and I, we would go in the bathroom and turn the device on to see the water turn, come out of this little device called a faucet. That was fascinating to us <laughs> because we used to draw water out of a well wash clothes and a wash pot and etc. And I see the young people always say, what is he talking about? This, this is the furthest thing from them. They don't understand that. As my granddaughter visited New York last week, they were standing in a hotel room, had a telephone, and she picked it up, trying to text with it but it was an old push button phone. And since she was trying to text with, no granddaughter, you can't text with this. This is what we grew up with. This is how much we have transitioned. But um, let's get to the word of God. I'm going to be speaking to you as I was given instructions from a scripture that's very familiar to all of us. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I'm just guess going to be speaking on two verses here. I beseech you, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service? And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen? Amen. In today's world, Communication and connectivity are extremely important. We, have, we as a society have become accustomed to, or some might say, addicted to smartphones. It's become a one-stop shop for information, be it real or fake. If you ask anyone now a question and they don't know the answer, their response is what? Google it. Google it. It's at your fingertips. 
And for our young people that are in school, you know what I'm talking about, because you have virtual learning now, you Google it, whatever you want to know. But see, when I was coming along, we didn't have Google. We had Britannica. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Britannica, the encyclopedia. You remember those? That's how we travel. We went from continent to continent on the, in the encyclopedia. But now we Google it. According to a survey conducted in February of 2021, nearly half, 46 percent of respondents stated that on average, they spent five to six hours on their phone on a daily basis, not including work-related smartphone use. Nearly half, 46 percent. A further 22 percent of respondents said that they spent three to four hours on average on their phones daily. Just 5% said they spent less than an hour a day on their smartphone. This was just February of this year that survey was conducted. I'm frightened to say what it would be if we took the survey now. That said, people spend a little over, I'm breaking it down even further, 76,500 hours of their lives staring at a cell phone screen. Roughly 8.74 years, according to this research. That this is simulated since the approximate age of a user to obtain a smartphone is 10 years, and the user uses it on an average of 3.7 hours daily. Connectivity, trying to keep up with everything that's going on. This research was conducted with a sample of 1,000 users of different ages and released the usage trends according to each of the generations found. Who used the most? Millennials were found to spend the majority of their time on their mobile device, an average of 3.7 hours per day. Generation X reports three hours of daily use, and the baby boomers, which is me, I'm, when I'm preaching, I'm preaching to myself now, 2.5 hours per day. Now, back in 2018, God spoke to me, and I disconnected from a lot of what's happening out there on social media, Twitter. I disconnected from it because it began to affect my psyche. It began to affect my relationship with God. It, was, it began to affect my relationship with the community. And I said, I don't want anything to separate me from the love of God. Because no matter what happens in this world, no matter what happens in D.C. at the White House, no matter what happens, the governor's mansion or the capital downtown, there is not a soul in that building, in that office, that can put me in heaven or hell. Only the man upstairs is able to do that, and that's who I look to. Not Washington, D.C., not Atlanta, Georgia. I look to the hills from which cometh my help, and my help cometh from God Almighty above and no one else. Whether we are texting, Snapchat, tweeting, selfies, photobombing, or Instagram, we're in there because we want to stay connected. In order to do this, we sacrifice a lot of quality time with our children, our grandchildren, our spouses, and etc. Now the question becomes, 
What do we sacrifice to connect with God? What do we give up to connect with God? We'll give up everything to connect with our coworkers. We'll give up everything to connect with our children, our grandchildren, or people who you feel are in influential positions. But when it comes to God, what are we willing to give up, sacrifice to connect with him? I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship, your reasonable service. Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. I'm going to break it down even further for you now. The book of Romans was written by Apostle Paul around 57 AD to address all mankind and all sin. Paul was very articulate and a prolific writer. He was also a servant. Simply stated, Paul was an effective oral and communicator. He had the gift of penning words that were sure to prick one's heart. As I stand before you this morning, I'm somewhat troubled and deeply concerned about the current state of affairs of God creation in his own image, mankind. As I stand this morning, it seems as if many have placed God and his word on a shelf like an elf. You move it around wherever you want to. Many have, many have stopped connecting to or forgotten how to connect to God or even believe that there is a God Almighty with a big G. The latest poll, the latest survey revealed that a majority of Americans have stopped believing in the God Almighty. And this is one thing I attributed to my mom and dad growing up down in South Georgia. And this past year, I created a memorial calendar for all my siblings with my mom and dad at the top. And I sent that to them, a calendar. And at the head end of that calendar, it said, Mom and Dad, we love and miss you, but thanks for laying a faithful foundation for your children. Because of their faith in God, I accepted Christ at an early age of nine down in South Georgia, and I will not waver from that because I saw how they worship the God Almighty, and I know that he is the only living God. He is the only one. But there are so many in our nation now who have completely forgotten that God exists and they have given up on him altogether. They have turned to connect to other things. The last time I checked, Buddha was dead. Confucius were dead. We serve the only living and risen Savior. Jesus the Christ. Now I, re I, I respect what others believe. I don't have to accept that. And I don't. But I know what I believe according to the word of God. And it has not changed in over 200 years. And it was not changed. And I share with people all the time. As troubled as I am about the state of affairs. I'm optimistic because I know God's word will not come back void. He said, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. No matter what happens, no matter what occurs, I will still be on the throne and I will be in charge. And every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that I am Lord, God Almighty. Amen. Now, with so many asking so many questions about what's going on 
in my spiritual mind, mankind is suffering from a brain aneurysm and he, man is in the ICU on a ventilator. I'm serious. As I have traveled across this state and this nation, I see things, I'm saying, how in the world did we arrive at this point? Can I be transparent with you, transparent with you this morning? I'm just going to be transparent. I, I, I just don't understand. I'm, I'm saying, God, help me. God, help me. God, help me. When you have someone who professes to be a man of God and preaches the word of God, and then they go and they decide something that's totally against the word of God, A vast majority of them ignore that. I'm saying, what? Come on, I, I, I can't understand that. We are witnessing a moral decay like never before. Turn on your TV. Turn on the television. Read the newspaper. Never in my wildest dream. Everything is being shown in front of minors. Everything is being said in front of minors. Everything is being done in front of children. Everything. It has crept into our schools, has crept into our universities, our institutions of learning. It even has crept into the halls of government. And I'm, I, God. As Roman 12, 1 says, before I get to that, I don't want you to think that um, that um angry? No, I'm not. Disappointed? Yes. Angry? No. Disappointed? And a lot of our leaders are not speaking up in regards to what says the Bible. This is my road map right here. This is my road map right here. And I have learned in studying the scripture, and you can mark this down. Any times culture collides with scripture, I'll repeat this. Any time culture collides with scripture, scripture always wins. Yeah. Every single time. Yeah. Every single time. Just because it's legal doesn't make it right in the eyes of God. I don't care what the Supreme Court says. If it goes against the word of God, I can't go with it. I'm not going to discriminate against you. I'm not going to hate you. I'm going to love you like I always love you. But if it's not according to the word of God, I can't go there. Just because it's legal doesn't make it right. So, as Roman 12, 1 says, I beseech you, brothers, therefore, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. When sacrificing an animal according to God's law, a priest would kill the animal, cut it in pieces, and place it on the altar. Sacrifice were more important, but even in the Old Testament, God made it clear that obedience from the heart was much more important. God want us to offer ourselves, not animals, as in the Old Testament, as living sacrifice. Daily laying aside or our own desires to follow and connect with him. We must put all our energy and resources at his disposal 
and trust him to guide us. Now your question becomes, how do we connect with God? I'm glad you asked. First, most importantly, we must study his word. Meditate on it and pray for his spiritual revelation for the application for your life. For the word says, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And I have, every morning, I get a prayer on my smartphone <laughs> that wakes me up at 5.15 to do my devotion. Every morning, that's how I'm connecting. Before I do anything, before I look at anything, I want my mind set in the right parameter to be focused on what God wants because as you um, wake up and go out in the world each morning, you are faced and you are bombarded with everything, everything. It reminds me of this prayer this young man was praying. He said, Lord, for the last eight hours, I have not used foul language on anyone. I have not uh, said any mean things about anyone. I have not mistreated anyone. I have not done anything against your word. But now I'm about to get up out of this bed, and I just need you to be here with me. <laughs> Because he knew what he was going to be faced with, someone cutting them off, someone waving them, waving at them with not all fingers up. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Because they cut you off, they ran the red light, etc. So I connect with him first thing every morning. Meditate on it. Pray God on his word. God will examine what kind of workers we have been for him. We should build our lives on his word and build his word in our lives. Let me say that again. We should build our lives on his word and his word in our lives. In other words, we should walk with it every single day. Don't treat it like an elf, put it on the shelf and walk off and leave it. It should be hidden in your heart every single day, every single day. It alone tells us how to live for him and serve him. Once we have accepted and applied his word, what we think doesn't matter. What God says in his word, what we think doesn't matter, it's all according to his word here. So many of us, I'm getting, like I said, I'm preaching to myself. So many of us, we look at God's word and we see it and say, well, that doesn't apply to me. That's for them over here. No, 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 no. We practice what I call selective obedience. I obey what I want to when it comes to God's word. But this part over here, you're stepping on my toes, so I'm not going to obey that part. I just selective obey what I want to obey. That doesn't cut it with God. You have to obey all of his word. Not the part that you don't like. You have to obey all of it. Not just the part you like, but the part you don't like. Because his word is like a two-edged sword. It cuts both left and right. You pray, you meditate, you study his word. And if you need clarification or further understanding, as Dr. Wetzel here, his team, staff here, they'll be able to offer that understanding to you, for you. Bible study, worship, teaching, small groups is an opportunity to get further understanding. Once we have accepted and applied his word, what we think doesn't matter. And be not conformed to this world. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your mind. Every day, 
God sends a renewal notice by the way of his word, the Holy Bible. It's outlined by inspired men of God for the people of God. Just like you get your insurance renewal notice, God sends you one every single day if you open up his word to renew your mind. New mercies happen every day, and you have to ask for mercies every single day because every single day you are faced with something new. Every single day you are faced with something new. That's why you have to ask for new mercies and guidance and prayer every single day. Something comes to you that you've never experienced before. In my spiritual mind, we are in need of a spiritual transma uh, transformation. A spiritual transformation. Walk with me here now. We are in desperate need of a transforma transformation to bring about the much needed change that we so desperately need. What are you talking about? Well, the root word for transformation is transform. Follow me now. Follow me. Which means to transform something into something different. A caterpillar undergoes a transformation process known as metamorphosis. After the completion, it turns into a beautiful multicolored butterfly. In agribusiness, now I can talk about this because I'm a farm boy, a seed planted in the ground undergoes a process called germination where the seed cracks the ground and if nurtured properly, will grow up and produce food and other usable items. Watching and having done this myself, watching my dad plant corn, we would rush out to see the crack in the ground as the little corn spuds start popping up. It's transforming. And then the ears will come on the corn. And then you will harvest the corn. And then you would process the corn to save for future use. It's transformation. My brothers, most likely that shirt you have on started out as a cotton seed that was planted. Grew to maturity, harvest, gin, weave, compress, measure, cut, package, loaded into a shipping carrier, and shipped to the new Macy's store there in Snellville for you to go purchase. It went through a transformation process. Ladies, I'm not leaving you out. <laughs> this same applies for you, my sisters. Those shoes, that dress, that handbag, those Jock Peterson, Jock Tobo pearls you had on the braids guy, they all went through a transformation to get to where they are. How does this apply to you? Secondly, we must present our bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable God, which is your reasonable service. Sacrifice means giving to the Lord whatever he requir requires of our time, our earthly possessions, and our energies to further his work. Paul is reminding the people of goodness and mercies of God, and they should reciprocate by presenting their bodies as a living sacrifice. The sacrifice Paul is speaking of here is one of giving oneself for the service of and for God. I heard Pastor Don talk about yesterday's event here at the church. Christmas packing up the thing of boxes, etc. Even before I was asked to come here, I follow you guys on the Facebook in regards to the great work that you're doing here. I see it. I see it. In order for you to do that, you have to sacrifice some things with your families. personal appointments, you sacrifice that time to come together as a people of God and that brings about improved connectivity with God to give further directions to you as far as what he wants you to do next. Sacrifice. 
sacrifice your time. We should joyfully volunteer as a living sacrifice for his service. My brothers and sisters, this is an act of transformation. In order for this transformation to take place, one has to be obedient to God's word. God wants us to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. Our lives should be purpose-driven only by the will of God and not by our own personal agenda. Why should we? Because our sins have already been forgiven by the blood of Jesus. Many times I know it's not easy. We must adopt an attitude of gratitude for what Jesus has done and is doing. When we, in, when we do this, we improve our connectivity to God. And finally, we have to worship, give thanks, and praise to God for all of his mercies and now. And only two times you should praise and worship God. Only two times. When you feel like it and when you don't. That's it. <laughs> Give him a hand clap of praise when you feel like it and when you don't. That's it. Don't just praise him because everything you prayed for has come to fruition and worked in your favor. Praise him even when your prayers aren't answered. Because, because it was not answered doesn't mean it's a denial. It could mean it's just delayed because you're not ready to accommodate what he's going to reward you with. So a denial is not a, a, re, a rejection. It's just a delay. So praise God when things are going good. And praise him when they're going bad. Because at the end of the day, he still sits on the throne. I call, when, I, when I look at this, and I do a lot of funerals, Brother Don, and one message I use in there, I call it a PTA. Back in my day, we had PTA, Parents Teachers Association, and now it's PTSA. But I cut it to PTA. Praise through adversity. Sometimes you have to praise your way through a lot of things you're going to. And going through. That improves your connectivity to God. Praise him. Through Jesus, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to continually be with him. That is the fruit of our lips and to give thanks to his name. And do not forget to do good and to share with others for which such sacrifice God is pleased. Such as what you all did yesterday here. And what you continually do with your various ministries and outreach. If there was ever a time the world needed to see people of God in action, now is the time. Instead of the church catering to the culture, it's time for the culture to start catering to what the church is doing. I can't say that enough. I know this is not the type of message you wanted to hear, but this is what God has given me. Okay? We have to get back to the word of God. We have to get back to the word of God. And as I reflect back upon when my mother transitioned from this earth to glory, lying, terminal cancer, 72 years old, I went to her bedside in Macon, tears in my eyes, and I said, God, why, why? To this day, I still have her laminated 23rd Psalm. She looked up at me and she said, Melvin, I've been blessed. I had a good husband. I raised eight beautiful kids. Not one time did I have to go to the jail to get you all. You're grown, 
you have your own families, you're doing well, if this is God's way of wanting to bring me home, I'm ready. That's what I call dying faith. She had a connection with God. And you can only do that by standing firm on his word. Because whether you're young or old, as my mom and grandmother would tell us, two things you can't control. You're coming here and you're leaving. We're going to leave. Moving is not so bad. As long as you have somewhere to go. I choose to go up here, not down there. Connect to God through his word. Meditate on it. Renew your mind day in and day out. Offer him praise. Give him thanksgiving for everything that's going on. Everything. And I close with one story. When I was living in Germany, I went to Germany. Germany. I was a freshman in college. My dad got my last set of semester grades. Let's just say he was none too pleased. He said, son, you're going to have to buckle down and do something else. So I, I uh, got in my vehicle, went down 2nd Avenue in Tipton, Georgia, and I saw this guy with the red, white, and blue and the big hat standing warning me, Uncle Sam. <laughs> so I went in and joined the Army. From there, I ended up in Fort Knox, Kentucky. Kentucky. Finished my basic training at ART. Came home on a two weeks leave. I landed in Germany, September 15, 1976. First time I'd ever been out of the country. And here I was at a land, was speaking a language I did not understand. I said, it's Heinz Bucken Sea Deutsch, yeah? The American one, two, Heinz White, Fear Funk. What? So when I got settled in my room, first thing I did, I called my dad. Dad, I'm here. He said, son, stand on God's word. You made your decision, now stick with it. And when I was in Germany, still separated. I had East and West Germany. I had to do border patrol on, on the American side and the Russian and what have you. And there we were out in the middle of nowhere. And the vehicle we were in got stuck. And off in the far distance, we saw this light. So we walked through the snow. And going up to this was a farmhouse. None of us spoke in, uh German, so how are we going to communicate with this homeowner? Only like God could do it. The guy comes to the door, spoke fluent English. He said, oh my God. Invited us back to his house after he got our vehicle out of the snow. And gave us some hot chocolate and coffee and what have you. And I asked him, now, this is out in the middle of Germany. I asked him, I said, how did you learn to speak such fluent English? He said, I was born in Detroit, Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> now, what were the chances? Out in the middle of Germany, in the wilderness, I was going to run into someone from Detroit, Michigan, that was going to come to my rescue and spoke fluent English. Only God could have made that connection. Only God could have made that. And when he said Detroit Mission, I said, praise God. <laughs> but I shared all that to share with you that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask. We stay connected to him and sacrifice, and God will do exceedingly above all of those things that you will ask. You're looking at someone who, as I said before, I've been blessed 
If God called me home tomorrow, I've been blessed. Because never in my wildest dream, never in my wildest dream did I think I would be called by the President of the United States to come to the White House. Never in my wildest dream. Matter of fact, my wife and I had come from church. And she was giving me the message of this and that. She says, oh yes, some came to be the White House. I said, what? This is how you know you get a call from the White House. You get the area code and the words, the White House, come across the screen. And my wife saw that and she said, oh my God, what have you done? <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't done anything. They were inviting us up and then that came in on Wednesday. Then that Thursday they called back and said it was a mistake. It was just for me, not her. They said, we apologize if you, if you don't want to come, you know, we understand, you know. And just let us know. And I told, I told my wife, and she said, um, what do you want to do? <laughs> I said, I love you, but I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> but I shared all of that to just to share. I never thought, I never thought, you're talking about a kid from the outhouse to the White House who grew up picking cotton. I mean, it worked in the field. I mean, I did that. I did that. And it, it, it was just divine connectivity because of staying true to God's word and just praying the prayer of uh, Jabez. And I just do that. And I love God, people. And the greatest sacrifice is the one God made when he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for all of us to have an eternal life. His son is a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance, we had left the sins committed before and unpunished. He gave the ultimate sacrifice, his only begotten son. And we offer him to you today for those who are not saved. Because at the end of the day, that's all that matters, his word. His word. You all been most kind, Pastor. Would you stand to your feet? We want to sing a hymn of invitation at this time. God has spoken to your heart about a matter that you want to come and pray. I'll be here to counsel with you. I will tell you to do, right now, I don't have my mask with me. So if you need a mask, uh, need me to wear a mask, uh, see me afterward, and uh, I'll be glad to speak with you from a distance. But uh, I don't like being distant from you. But uh, I also wanted you to know that. Uh, you come as the Lord would lead. Let me pray, and then we'll, we'll sing together. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that it is sharp, it is quick, it is powerful. Father, forgive us when we are conformed to this world. Forgive us, Father, when we resist being transformed by the renewing of our minds. Lord, we pray now that you will take the, the message that we've heard and you will apply it to our hearts. And if there's anyone here today who has never trusted in you as their personal Savior, I pray they would do so in this next few moments. First, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You come as the Lord leads. This is my desire to honor you. Lord, with all my heart, I worship you.
give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake. Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. that I take every moment I'm awake Lord have your way in me and that's certainly our prayer isn't it God have your way with us have your way with us Elizabeth it is so good to see you here today amen we have been uh, we have been praying for you, and we will continue to pray for you. Thank you. We're so glad you're here. Let me share just one final word, then I'm going to ask Dean to lead us in a closing prayer. Uh, thank you for all of you who prayed for our family and my wife in the loss of her mother this last week. Uh, it was a very difficult week for lots of reasons. And I'll ask you to continue to pray. Judy has injured her knee trying to lift her mother in a lift in the hospital bed and get her turned from the uh, problems that she was having before she passed. And she's twisted her knee and spent some time in the ER. Nothing seems to be broken, but it is a severe sprain. And uh, so she has got a brace, but she's not wearing it, of course. But uh, pray for her, would you? Uh, we're... I'm trying to talk her into seeing an orthopedic surgeon or at least an orthopedic guy just to see what's really going on. But, um, you know, we're all kind of stubborn sometimes. And I hope this is not recording at the moment. But uh, anyway, God bless you. Let's pray for one another. And uh, I'm excited about what God is doing. Brother Melvin, thank you for being here so much today. Thank you for sharing your heart with us. Absolutely. I will be outside in the foyer. I'm not going to be out in the cold, because I, but I don't want you hanging up out there too long. So feel free to just walk right on by. There's a song, so I walk on by or something. Anyway, lead us in prayer, would you, brother? Father God, we thank you so much for this wonderful day that you've given us. Thank you for Brother Melvin and, and the word that he has shared with us. We pray your blessings upon him and his family, especially his wife who's in recovery. And Lord, we just thank you for this time that we've had as your church gathered to sing your praises and to open your word and be changed. Lord, help us to view each and every day as our opportunity to present ourselves as a living sacrifice for you. It's just all that we can do to thank you for the sacrifice you made on our behalf and to make it possible for us to know you. We pray all this in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. Church, go be a blessing to others.